Hi, this is Gershon Wolf, and welcome to uh, Modern Music Composition. Um, in our previous video, we talked all about um, voice leadings, and I explained the Tonitz diagram in terms of um, harmonic movement be between chords and how one can visualize um, how, how you would lead yourself through a chord progression how many positions are involved and what type of, of um, operations you need to perform uh, in terms of parallel relatives, leading tones, from getting from one position of progression to another position. Then I mentioned modulations to new keys and I said, well, I, I, I said I, I should have a separate video for doing that with respect to tritones. In, and I mentioned uh, we were going to be looking at um, dominant sevenths and dominant seventh chords in particular. So let's do that today. I've got my, my handy dandy friend here, the uh, circle of fifths. <laughs> and, and the reason why I, I, I put it up here is because you, you can be in any one of these major chords, for example, and um, know exactly which uh, key. Uh, you're going to be modulating into just by looking at its polar opposite. So if I'm in the key of C and I'm doing uh, this dominant seventh tritone substitution, I know for a fact I'll be modulating into F sharp major. If I'm in the key of G, I know for a fact I'll be modulating into D flat uh, major. Let's do let's let's do just that. Let's do an example. Let's take G seventh. First of all, we need to define a dominant seventh chord here. Let me get the pen going here. So G7 is defined as you first take your um, major triad where you've got four semitones here and three semitones here and then you build this out, you build this D out another three semitones and that gets you to an F. So that's what defines a dominant seventh chord is a, a, a major triad plus a minor third. But what does that create? Well, let's expand this. Between D and F, how many semitones do we have? Six. That's your tritone, your diminished fifth. That's the whole magic here. Well, there's no magic. That's, that's, that's how you can modulate between different keys, and I'll show you exactly what happens. So let, let me... Um, magic is an illusion. This is not an illusion. <laughs> All right. What you do is you take the third of your seventh chord that you're in, and you move it to the seventh of your new chord, of your new key. Then you take the seventh of the chord that, that we were in, and we move it to the third. Then we just play a little Jeopardy here, and we fill in the blanks. So I know from F, I need to go up three semitones. Well, that's going to be what? Um, F to G, that's going to be, uh, let's, let's make that um, A flat because that's going to be G sharp, but we're going to make it A flat. And we know from A flat to B, that's three semitones, so we've justified, we've sought, well, we've satisfied um, that requirement, and now we just need to build out the, the front part of this. Well, that's going to be four semitones down from F, which is our D flat. So then this is D flat seventh, is defined as D flat F A flat B. So I'm just going to highlight these again. And the cool thing about this is we've only moved a total of two semitones. How, how, how is that? Well, from G to A flat is one semitone. So from G to A flat, we've spent one semitone. And from D to D flat, uh, <laughs> D to D flat, <laughs> one semitone. 
So it makes for very, very efficient um, modulation. And certainly, this is used this is used a lot. It's used, and, and once again, it's used in all types of music. And in fact, um, let me explain this. In progressions, especially when you're at the end of a progression or you're at the end of a piece of music, it's very popular to use a seventh chord. This is getting a little bit off topic, but I want to mention it. If I'm at G7 and I'm doing, let's do a 5, 7, 1 progression. So we're doing a, a, a dominant to a tonic progression, but we're taking the dominant 7th. So G7th, we know that that's going to be G, B, D, F. Our tonic, in this case, is what? C. So C, D, E. F, G, you'll see how things start to fit really well here, and this is why. The third of our G seventh acts as a leading tone to the tonic, so that is a nice movement into the tonic. You'll see that the seventh of our um, dominant seventh chord acts as a, um, acts as, as a, it acts as a frontal leading tone to the third of our, our tonic. And so it leads extremely well into E. And so obviously G is G. And so that's why it's used all the time in, in, in going from five to one. A lot of times you'll see in progressions that fifth is actually a dominant seventh. Okay? So. I just thought of something. Okay, I want to mention it right now. So, this is obviously a course on atonal music, right? So, I talk in terms of tonality today. We talked in terms of the uh, dominant seventh, and I showed you this small progression where you go from the dominant seventh to the tonic, a five, seven, one uh, progression. Um, However, the tritone is used all the time. I mentioned this before, I think, in a previous video. It's used, it's used all the time in atonal music. And in fact, um, Bela Bartok's music um, uses it extensively. And if you analyze Bartok's music, um, you'll see a lot of the analysis is done with what's called the axis system. Okay? What is the axis system? Well, I'm going to just briefly mention that right now. Uh, now's a good time to do it. Because it's pretty cool. Normally, in classical music, or we'll call it tonal music, the, the, there's what, there are what are the primary chords, the one, the four, and the five. I mentioned all this Roman numeral stuff in the previous video. It's pretty straightforward stuff, what one, four, five is. These are primary um, chords. They're the uh, majors. And in classical music, this is why the tonants was, was so popular, was because you could visualize going from the primary to its secondary. What's the secondary of, of the one, of the tonic? It's six, A. For four, it's two, D. And for five, it is um, three. E. Well, that's tonal music, and that's great. Here's the thing. In a lot of Bartok's music, rather than substituting, and here, this is what's key, no, no pun intended, <laughs> rather than it, the, the relative being the um, closest to the primary, it uses what's called the axis, and the axis is essentially the tritone. And so let me just draw what, that, what I mean by that. Now I also mentioned, well let me just label this, this is the main branch. 
and this is the secondary. I mentioned, I think, in one of the first couple videos that what really differentiates atonal music from tonal music is tonal music is asymmetric. If you look at the relationships between F, C, G, D, A, and E in that scheme on the circle of fifths, it's kind of asymmetric. Atonal music has a lot of symmetry associated with it. Why? The reason why is because remember I told you that atonal music has no tonal center. Well, what's the best way to cancel out the center of anything? Think of it as the center of mass of something. The best way to cancel it out is through perfect symmetry, right? Um, and so if if I had a, a, a ball bearing, or sorry, if I had a, 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 if I was doing some weightlifting and on the left hand side I had 50 pounds and on my right hand side I had 65 pounds, that's asymmetric, right? I'm going to need a different force on that 50 than I will on the, on, on the 65 or 60. And let's say they're both symmetric, 50. <coughs> well, there, there's no tonal center. Okay, you can think of it like, like that. So, let me just write this out. It, what, what, what this is really saying is that in atonal music, get back to black. C is closer to F sharp rather than, than um, A minor. It's closer to F sharp major. And then it's, it's also saying that E flat is closer to A. And that's it, sort of its secondary scheme. Now, you can look at that and you can say, oh, um, hmm, if I rearrange all these things together, I get A, C, E flat, F sharp. What am I building here? Between A and C, I have three semitones. Between C and E, <clears throat> I have three. Between E and F sharp, I have three. That's a diminished seventh. Notice the symmetry there? Three, three, three. Okay? But I only showed that just because that, that is a property, but don't look at it like that. Look at it like C. C's closest relative now is F sharp. E flat's closest relative now is A. So now I can modulate, and this is done a lot in Bartok's music, is you go from one key to another this manner and then you'll take this key to that key in, in this manner and it can it gets very interesting but you're gonna have to start thinking like this for, for atonal music because atonal music has a lot of structure in it okay that structure is very symmetric so there's nothing random about it at all and um, there's, there's there's a lot of creativity that goes in to putting this type of music together to make it sound good so um, I wanted to mention that because uh, I thought it was just important to point out now that we were talking about uh, modulation. This is the kind of modulation that, that occurs in, in atonal music. And we'll go into much greater detail on the access system in, in other videos, but I just wanted to mention that. Um, so that's it. Um, thank you very much, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.